Hi, and welcome to the trip. I'm Megan Slattery, and this is my co-host. Tracy Evans. So, we're starting out with, uh, I like this question. How many times do you pursue a woman before letting go? <laughs> you have some thoughts. Okay. Yes. I, I say two with, with some time in between the first and second. If she's rejecting, I mean, this implies that there's a rejection. So, I'd say two patients, uh, some time in between, and if you're still interested in her, it can be a timing thing. There is such thing as timing. Uh, so I do believe, I'd say two. I don't think it's a bad thing to go back to a person that you're really interested in if you have seen some signs that the person is also interested in you. So this cannot be a fantasy in your head. You cannot be making this up. You cannot just want to have that person. Those are not reasons to go back in, but I would say two. Two? Yeah. Yes. If you do it right, it only takes once. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy uh, shared some methods with us. I was like, well, he's probably right. Actually. No, okay. Like, yeah. look, you, I mean, I hate to be cliche with the whole Eminem, you know, you only get one shot. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> if, if you monitor and if you like sit back and actually just think about this situation of you approaching this person, male or female, but in this particular case, I think it was, it was a, a man. It was a man. Yeah, Marty in Michigan. Man pursuing a woman, mm -hmm. which we were saying earlier, like, the, it's funny that the stereotype is always that men are the pursuers. Yeah, which, yeah, I which, think, right. Which is crazy. It's but not necessarily In this case. case, if you are going to be trying to ask someone, I would say it takes once. If you do it properly, um, you have to give them an offer that they can't refuse. Mm -hmm. Take that time to actually prepare and say, hey, like, I'm really interested in you because I, I don't know if most men know this or not, but women get hit on every day, all the time. They could just be walking down <laughs> the street and some person is just going to be like, hey, hi, how are you? Like, right. And it's, they just take that as like, I'm, I'm, I'm being hit on. So if you're going to ask a woman out, one time. I think it's only once. Okay. So one time, <clears throat> I have to say a couple things about that. Yelling at a woman on the street is not being hit on. <laughs> so you're right, Tracy. Sure, yeah. Up your game. I mean, if you're really interested in somebody, pursue them in a way that, that makes us want to go out with you. The reason I'm still sticking with two is there is timing. There is, uh, you know, this has been a pretty hard year for, my, for myself. If someone asked me now versus maybe six months from now, and it is someone I'm somewhat, I've given signals, I am attracted to them, I'm interested in them, it would take that second time. Even though you have really great game and you're, you, you know, <laughs> you have a nice uh, way of setting it up and you would be asking them on a date, um, I do want to give the option for Marty in Michigan to go in for a second if there's signals. If, if there's, there's signals. signals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess that makes sense if there are signals, but I still say, I say like, one. You, you prepare yourself for the one time, and if that one time, you know, you get shot down, there are a lot of other people. Okay, so you're saying, well, well, then, then, so if I'm in a bad place and I say no to you, but I'm still into you, wouldn't it be worth you to come back around? Yes. But okay. That, at that point, um, the the woman has actually shown interest. Okay. So now it's not like you've already, so you, if you've asked that one time and she says no, then she said no. But if you come back and somehow you guys have a friendship or whatever, and then she shows interest, that's a whole nother time now. Okay. I got it. That's a whole nother time now. Because I got like it. That first time she said no, but then she's, like now she's somehow pursued some sort of interest and there's like, she or said she's, I've had a bad time, or she, but I really like you. Right. I'm into you. Right. Then you can go back. Yeah, then you can go back. Okay. The, after the first time, no, but you have to make sure that first time is a really good first time. Like we were saying earlier, make it, you have to woo her. Like mm -hmm. actually do something that she'll, she won't forget. You know, yeah. I see so many guys in bars hit on girls and it's just like, do you not think that this attractive person has had every man in this bar probably hit on her? Right. Especially if it's like a bartender. God, that's like right, right. time after time after time after time. Right. But um, 
create some interest. Create some interest. Right. And actually, why are we going to? I mean, in this case, and we know this is so. This is from a heterosexual man asking a woman. So right. we're we're using that as the premise. Obviously, there's many other ways that this could work out, but man to man, woman to woman. But in this particular case, uh, I do agree that make it appealing. I don't want to just hang out. If I wanted to hang out, I'd like to hang out by myself. <laughs> <laughs> or go see my girlfriends or take the dogs out. I mean, there's so many other things in my life that I would like to do that just hanging out doesn't sound appealing. Right. But yeah, if you come to me with a nice date, something that sounds like fun, doesn't have to be um, elaborate, but it just sounds, it just has to have some effort put into it. it I'm to. really big on effort. Yeah, it has to be. If we can just show up in our sweats, that's not going to work out for me very well. No. That's a the, big no. And the whole wooing thing, like I was saying earlier, yeah. we had a... I like wooing. <laughs> of course, every woman does. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, there's the fine line of that, how we were saying earlier of, you know, 50, 60 years ago in another time, yeah. you meet a girl, you think she's attractive, She, you have a conversation, you know where she works. Later that week, you're thinking about her and you drop off flowers at her job. 50 right. years ago, like, you just wooed her. She's yours. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you could end up in jail. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, someone, so this, someone this could is... literally, like, get a restraining order on you because you showed up at their job and <laughs> dropped off. I mean, maybe okay. not. Maybe but, not restraining order. But still. But, okay, times have changed, for times sure. Changed. 50, right. Those were, there was different moral codes and there was different codes of conduct that were pretty spe specific and pretty strict between men and women. Um, so it was different. So yeah, we have to kind of update what we're doing, of course. We aren't living in the 50s. Um, but w yeah, so how much is too much and what, what turns creepy is, is what you're saying. Yeah. Too much um, is not going to read well. And creepy would be obviously invading the woman's space. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can't do something like that. No. So Yeah. No, not at all. Mm -mm. That's, that's a bit too much. A bit too much. All right. So we're going to go with one for Tracy. Two with time in between for Megan. All right, moving on. Second question is a little complicated. Signed, so this is from, curious about her soulmate. Uh, she lives here, has a divorced woman, lives here in Michigan, and has known uh, this particular man that she has been sexting slash texting with um, who lives in another state. He is married. He has two kids in high school. So married, married man, They've known each other since second grade. They live in separate states. And he is unhappily married. She would like to know, should after six years of having this texting, sexting relationship, should they rendezvous and see if there's something there for them? Or is it time to just really cut that off and Does move she, on? What's her situation? Her situation is uh, two kids, pretty young, and uh, she's divorced. divorced. Yeah, so he's married unhappily married on both sides, meaning they have had a legal separation at one point. So they just have chosen, that particular couple has chosen to stay together until the kids graduate from high school. So te in theory, there could be potential relationship is what the implication is here. Mm. <laughs> oh boy. Am I going first on this one? Are you gonna are you gonna make me do this? No, I will totally go <laughs> oh, first. Oh, you will. Oh, you got opinions. <laughs> I do. Advice and yes. opinions, I hope. Yes, both. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, I would say let it be. Uh, I know they're separated. Mm -hmm. I know they're, you know, when you're within a separate a marriage separation is obviously a time where a lot of people do different things with other people yeah. when it's you know, it's whatever. True. Um the kids i think it would be very difficult for the mm -hmm. kids to like see this whole other portion of their parents while they're married and you know you're trying to wait till the kids are in high school it just sounds like a complete mess yeah and i get it it's a person that you're texting or whatever but you live across the country yeah like is this person going to move are you going to move for each other right are you going to now that you're, i mean i guess your kids are out of high school so maybe there is a chance but it just sounds like a mess. I would say keep maybe the conversation as far as friends okay. there. But when it comes to sexting, and I feel like you're setting yourself up for heartbreak and uh, setting yourself up for a lot of drama and things that, that don't need to be happening. Right. I have a question before I go. Yeah. Do you think the drama fuels it? Like 
the, she's, she's the, getting, the drama of not being able to have someone. I'm not saying drama like uh, the unnecessary sure drama, not, but, but like the, the drama the, of the, not being able to have someone. Do you think that fuels um, interest? Sure, the, the fire, the spice. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. That's why I'm saying. Like, I think now that they have this distance between them, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden you get together and either someone, you know, moves or whatever. If you rendezvous, whatever. Right. I and you're shopping at Costco together, right? <laughs> Which is the dream, apparently, for some people. <laughs> I don't think anyone said it was the dream. But... I mean, ca oh, yeah, carrying, carrying all someone all carrying your Costco outfit. goods? Yeah. Well, I don't shop at Costco, but my dream is to have a man in my life that carries my stuff. Yeah, of course. Okay, so we're digressing. <laughs> Yes. yes, but I think but the dream. Yeah, the but dream I, is doing things together for sure. But I, I think that it's uh, yes. There is <laughs> there is a portion of the fire, you know, that they it's spicy because there is the distance and there is the marriage and there is whatever. Yes. But you can still be interested in whatever without without keeping it, without getting to the sex scene and, and crossing those lines. I know I don't know the time period until they have to wait until it's divorceable or whatever. But yeah. If you really want to be with someone, just go be with them. You know, get the divorce and, you know. Wow. Okay. Go be with them. Okay. So my, you know, I wanted to, I was torn about whether to go with my, uh, what I would do, potentially what I would do in this situation and advice. And they're two separate things. I think I'm, I don't know, actually. At this point in my life, I would probably use a lot of caution and I, I tend to believe that if you're, you're saying leave the door open in terms of having that friendship, that friendship is pursuing, it seems like they are both pursuing romance. They've known each other since second grade. She signed it off, so this is my curious about her soulmate. There's a lot more than just, um, there's a lot more riding on this. It sounds like she or, and he are thinking there's uh, an eventual relationship here. If it were just a fling, I would say I would probably be very tempted to just pursue it and see what was there because they do have so much together. But my advice is it's it's too much. People are going to be hurt. Um, a separation is not a divorce. Uh, you yeah. don't know if you have physical chemistry because they have not had physical intimacy. Yeah, right. Uh, it, there's too much writing on it, and both partners have are established in the communities they're in. I just don't see it. I see the high school kids and then young kids mixing. To me, I think there's way too much writing on it. I think the only uh, outcome for this is pain. I don't see it. So I would say I also believe in if you hang on to a relationship that isn't fully taking, uh, fully developed, so it's just through texting or through, right. through this, this form, it's keeping you from opening the door for someone who is really well, available to carry your things. That's a very good right. point. Thank that you. is a very good point. Yeah, I yeah. just, I, I just, I, I've been in those situations where I feel like you're, it's like holding a, a space for somebody that isn't really there. So. Yeah, people do that way too often. Way and I too feel often. like this person could be very much so caught up in this situation of holding a space for someone who, you know, doesn't potentially work out. Both of them, not just her. I think him so too. Also. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think it's this, just her. I think it's mutual. You have this hope, and of course, everyone wants the fantasy and you know, hopes that it's going to be this turn out to be this magnificent thing. And kids, we get a divorce, and the kids are grown, and now we're together, and it's you know happily ever after. And like, she has someone to carry her bags now. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, but, guys. We keep going back to my little dream. <laughs> but I mean, it's you're you're that those fantasies are occupying up space that someone else, a potential soulmate, so too. could be occupying. And I say you just yeah. keep it keep it kosher as friends and, and yeah. move on and keep that space for someone else. I think so too. I think uh, there's the curio curious about your soulmate. Uh, watch episode four. There's more than one soulmate in the world. Yeah. And a, a true soulmate, you can, have, you can hold them in your heart you don't have to continue that connection. So I, I have a pretty firm feeling, uh, firm advice about this. It, it, there's a little bit of fear hanging on to that one person that you aren't fully having. And I think you you both deserve more. He deserves more. He deserves time to work out what he's working out. And you deserve having a full relationship. So yeah, yeah do your best. I know it's not easy, but yeah, I think I think it's time to yeah. step away. 
The full relationship, I think yeah. what you said is key. The full relationship, yeah. all of it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. And our, our email is relationships at deadline Detroit. We look for a dot com and we look forward to hearing from you. Yeah. Send us those questions, guys. All right. Bye.